suspect who was wanted by international law enforcement in connection with the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moïse has been arrested in Jamaica. Colombian national and former military officer Mario Antonio Palacios is in the custody of Jamaican law enforcement authorities. Now, Palacios is wanted by the International Criminal Police Organization, Interpol. Palacios is being held in Jamaica for illegal entry and is expected to be deported in the coming days or extradited from the island. In a statement issued today, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, said it can confirm that an individual alleging to be a Colombian national has been arrested in Jamaica on immigration breaches. The JCF says the individual has subsequently become the subject of an Interpol red notice as of today, October 21. According to the JCF, it is now working with its international partners in line with established treaties and protocols. The JCF says it will provide more information at an appropriate time. Now further reports are that Palacios is considered one of the most wanted men in Haiti and the country has reportedly requested that he be flagged by Interpol. Following the assassination, the Haitian National Police announced that it had launched a wanted notice against Palacios, whom they say was part of the group of mercenaries that killed Moise. In other news tonight, police have launched an investigation into an incident where a woman was shot in an attempted robbery at the corner of Garden Boulevard and Old Hope Road in St. Andrew this morning. It is reported that the woman was walking to work when armed men drove up in a light blue Honda Fit. A licensed firearm holder who was in the vicinity shouted to the men to leave the woman alone. The men then opened fire. The firearm holder returned the gunfire. The gunmen then ran off, leaving their cell phones inside the vehicle. The woman who was shot in the leg was taken to hospital. We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. As we continue with the news tonight, the grandson of the elderly woman who was found dead at her home in Allside District, Warsaw, Trelawney on Monday, has been charged with murder. Charged is 26-year-old Jermaine Powell, otherwise called Man of Allside District, Warsaw, in the parish. Reports coming into our news center tonight are that at approximately 12.15 a.m., Powell reported to the police that he discovered his grandmother's body in her bed covered in blood. The police reportedly responded and upon their arrival, Walcott was found with multiple lacerations all over the body. The crime scene was processed and the victim's body was removed to the morgue. Powell was taken into custody and a question and answer session was conducted on Monday, October 18. Now, during the session, Powell reportedly confessed to killing his grandmother. He was subsequently charged. His court date is being finalized. Still making Mellow TV news tonight, the trial against members of the Klansman gang was adjourned yesterday and set for next Monday due to members of the criminal organization testing positive for COVID-19. Chief Justice Brian Sykes was informed on Monday that alleged gang member Jermaine Robinson had tested positive for COVID-19. This comes following the first postponement two weeks ago when two other gang members, allegedly Andre Goulding and Owen Ormsby, tested positive for COVID-19. The presiding judge had ordered that Robinson should return to court on October 24 and arrangements were to be made to have him join the trial remotely yesterday. But this was not approved by the Ministry of Health and Wellness, resulting in the trial being adjourned. The COVID-19 test for reputed gang leader Andre Blackman Bryan was returned yesterday with a negative result. There are 32 alleged gang members being tried for 25 counts under the Criminal Justice Act. In tonight's COVID-19 update, four additional COVID-19 deaths have been recorded in Jamaica, increasing fatalities from the virus now to 2,133. 
The deceased are an 89-year-old man from Manchester, a 76-year-old man from St. Catherine, a 74-year-old woman from St. Mary, and a 72-year-old man from St. Anne. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says the deaths occurred between October 17 and 19. In the meantime, there were 74 new cases ranging in age from 3 months to 87 years, increasing the total to 87,797, of which 28,959 are active. Now of the new cases, 36 are women and 38 are men. In tonight's COVID-19 parish breakdown, Clarendon recorded 22 cases, St. Catherine recorded 15 cases, Kingston and St. Andrew, 14 cases. Manchester recorded 9 cases. St. Mary recorded 4 cases. St. James and Trelawney recorded 3 cases each. St. Elizabeth recorded 2 cases. St. Anne and Portland recorded 1 case each. In the meantime, there were 160 additional recoveries, increasing the total of recovered persons now to 56,106. Still making the news tonight, a pregnant female manager is among five members of pharmaceutical company Caramed and four members of the investment firm AIC Jamaica, who sought injunctions in court yesterday against the COVID-19 vaccination policies at their companies, which they say are partially mandatory. The concerned Caramed workers claimed that the policy at the company is in breach of their constitutional rights, while the employees from AIC Jamaica say the regulations go against their contracts. A date for the hearing of the applications for the injunctions filed in the Supreme Court has not yet been set. Caramed's vaccination policy took effect on October 4 and states that all employees must provide proof of COVID-19 vaccination or present a negative COVID-19 test twice per month at the employee's own expense. While AIC's vaccination policies took effect on September 15 and state that employees who are not vaccinated must submit a weekly negative COVID-19 test result at their own expense, and this was made a part of their condition of employment. The policy also states that all employees should have been fully vaccinated by September 23 and employees who are not vaccinated will not be allowed on property and will be deemed absent without pay. We will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information is advising that payments to teachers and affected staff in schools should be paid no later than October 29. The ministry says it is reassuring school administrators that it is taking all the necessary steps to ensure that new staff at their schools as well as existing staff with new contracts are compensated as per their employment agreements. The ministry's audit of the submission of employment contracts indicates that in some cases, supporting documents such as banking information and letters of assumption have still not reached the central ministry. As such, some staff members will not be paid through the early payroll, which was due today. Now, in an effort to resolve the situation, the ministry says it is appealing to the affected schools to provide all outstanding documents by October 21, 2021. The ministry said that steps have also been taken to process two other payrolls, one on October 26 and the other on October 28, adding that in light of this, all affected staff should be paid by October 29. As we continue with the news tonight, the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, yesterday highlighted key aspects of Jamaica's economic performance during the second quarter of this year. Statin's Director General, Carol Coy, in her presentation explained that the service industries saw an increase for the period. Looking at the performance of the services industries, Hotels and restaurants increased by 334.6%. 
the wholesale and retail trade repairs installation of machinery and equipment went up by 19.3%. Transport storage and communication increased by 13.9%. Other services increased by 23.2%. Real estate renting and business activities increased by 5.2%. Finance and insurance services, 2.8%. Electricity and water supplies, 4%. And producers of government services, 0.4%. Looking at the goods producing industries, value added for the goods producing industries grew by 12.7%. And this was mainly attributed to higher output levels in construction, which grew by 17.4% agriculture, forestry, and fishing, which went up by 15%. Manufacture went up by 12.9%. However, the mining industry declined by 9.2%, due mainly to a fall in the production of alumina and crude bauxite. Ms. Coy also explained that service industries accounted for an over 50% increase in the employment labor force during the second quarter of this year. In looking at the labor force by industry group, the, com the combined increase in the number of persons employed in the industry groups, construction and real estate and other business services, accounted for over 50% of the increase in the employed labor force. There were 118,300 persons employed in the construction industry, and this is an increase of 28.3%. Of the 26,100 persons more in construction, males accounted for 25,900 of these persons. For the real estate and other business services industry, there were 115,100 persons employed, an increase of 23%. Females accounted for the largest increase in this industry, 11,900 or 25.4%. The other industry groups with notable increases were the accommodation and food service activities, which um, employed 17,800 persons more, agriculture, forestry, and fishing, 6,200 more persons, and the wholesale and retail repair of motor vehicles and motorcycle group, which employed 5,500 more persons. She also outlined the increase in the occupational group's labor force. Looking at the labor force by occupation group, the group's elementary occupation and service workers and shop and market sales workers accounted for more than 50% of the increase in the employed labor force. The number of persons employed in elementary occupation was 155,700 an increase of 19.3% relative to July 2020. The group, service workers and shop and market sales workers, increased by 9.9% in July 2021. Other occupation groups with large increases were clerks, which went up by 18,300 persons, professional senior officials and technicians, which increased by 10,400, and craft and related trade workers, which went up by 2,900. Turning to unemployment, the July 2021 labor force showed that there were 112,500 unemployed persons in Jamaica. This was a decline of 30.4% or 49,200 persons when compared to July 2020. The number of unemployed males fell by 43.4% in comparison to the number of unemployed females, which went down by 17.5%. And that's our news package for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Mellow TV Evening News at 8. I am Shelly Ann Hill. Do stay safe and pleasant viewing.